welcome to Every Creature Commission Television and the program Reese Howell's Intercession Continuing and your preacher Brian Mason. Let us first commit the study of God's Word to the Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you from the very depths of our heart for that new and living way unto thyself, through the blood of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that as we come into thy banqueting house and are partakers of the heavenly food, it is with joy in our hearts, peace in our hearts, that we have been reconciled with thyself, that our sin, which has cut us off from a holy God, that through repentance and through the cleansing of the blood of thy beloved Son, once the blood has been applied to our hearts, then the sin has been removed as though we had never sinned. And we look to go on with thyself, because what does it, the body of Christ need in these days, O oh Father God? It's to know their position in Christ, to know the fullness of God, to know that all that you have to offer is in thy beloved Son, and that the living water, those streams which flow into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, are to bring us into that wonderful, wonderful place of knowing that our God dwells not just among us, but within us. And we feed on thy word, because we need that food every day, and to see thy glorious plan for each individual life, and ultimately that Jesus shall return from the glory in his second coming and gather unto himself his bride, to present it spotless and without blemish unto thyself. For Father God is all offered in the name above all other names, thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And it's now done for thy glory that you will be all in all. Amen. We're continuing our study into the life of Moses. And our reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. And verses 17 to 29 inclusive. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn unto Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose which knew not Joseph, the same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children, to the end they might not live. In which time Moses was born, and was exceedingly fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up 
and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeking one of them, seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, your brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbour wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. The Lord had his own blessing unto the reading of his word. That reading gives us background to our continued study from the book of Exodus. Yes, Stephen, in his discourse to the council, the Jewish council in his defense, brought out how God had worked for his people. And that included how he had prepared Moses before he used him. And Moses can clearly be seen as a huge, huge failure. And when we are failures in the sight of the world, and are relying entirely upon God, knowing that we are no longer on our own, but are bought with a price, the price of God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have no confidence in the flesh, no seeking of self-righteousness, no seeking of self-glory. But when the Holy Spirit has come in as God and we have gone out, the deep, deep lesson, the deep revelation which Reese howls so, that when the Holy Spirit, he came in as God and Reese Howells went out, that's the same that happened with God's servant speaking to you. And it just has to be the same with all who are to be mightily used by God at this time. There's no other way. Otherwise, it's just the self-life. And the self-life is no use whatsoever to God. When we have gone out and the Holy Spirit has come in, as Moses, over the coming weeks we will see how Moses was used by God. And Moses 
was seen even by Pharaoh to be as God before Pharaoh. That's the power and the authority that is received by the intercessor and by those even though they may not be specifically intercessors who will be what the vessels of the Holy Spirit dead to self so that the life of God comes out into them and through them to bring fruit to the glory of God and the glory of God alone. In Exodus chapter 2, we see God working in sovereign power. God overruling the schemes of man and the schemes behind man of he who sought to make himself as the Most High. And that spirit of seeking to make himself as the Most High is still at work in the world today. But God is still sovereign and God does and God will continue to do that which is his own plan. However, he needs those through whom he can work because he doesn't act just from heaven he needs vessels, clean vessels, cleanse vessels that do not have sin within them, so that the Holy Spirit can work through them and fulfill that plan. Here we see God's overruling hand in the life of Moses. Even before he was born, he had brought together godly parents. And there went out a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. That speaks volumes because Moses' parents were undoubtedly godly people and set apart for God. And it was to this couple, who had already had children, that, this, that Moses, who went on to be what? The greatest man used in the whole of the Old Testament. Because Moses would be prepared to be blotted out from the book of life. That's intercession, being prepared to be cut off from God, to lay his own life down for God. And even before he was born, these parents had been chosen by God. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she showed him that he was a goodly child, 
she hid him three months. That took courage. That took trusting entirely in the Almighty. Because what had been the command, the commands from the throne of Pharaoh, from the very mouth of Pharaoh, the Pharaoh had charged all his people, saying, These were the Hebrews. And Moses was born a Hebrew. Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river. But Moses' his parents saw that this baby was a very special baby. Not only in their eyes, but they saw beyond that their God had brought Moses. He wasn't called Moses then. But they brought him to birth for a very special purpose. And his parents had sought to hide him, to preserve him, and had managed successfully for three months. But no doubt word was getting out that there was a baby that hadn't been cast into the river. And Moses' his mother acted in faith to protect her baby. And she acted in faith knowing that her God would look after him. She placed her whole trust in God. Have you placed all your trust in God? Have you given him all your life? As undoubtedly Moses' his mother had done with her own life. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. That took courage. Yes, she'd made this ark and she'd put her baby in there. And she laid him, as it were, at the side of the river. At a place where, humanly speaking, it was as safe as it could be. And what should happen? And the very last person that you would expect to appear, the daughter of Pharaoh, came. She came at the right time to the right place. Had Moses' mother known that that was the spot where she went to bathe? Or had she been directed there by the Almighty himself? God is absolutely precise and spot on. He knew the right place at the right time, and the right person would come there. Have we got our trust that God is absolutely working out his plan through those who are his in this world at this time? Not working out the plan of the enemy of God, but working out God's plan that those who are still to be brought to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ through repentance and faith 
accepting the gift of God by grace and the cleansing of the blood of the Lord Jesus as a pardon for sin. To receive then all that God has to offer whilst on earth. And what does he offer? He offers his own life. Not a selfish life. Not a life filled with lusts. But a life to be lived entirely for God. As undoubtedly Moses' mother did. Deep lessons. And they're still as relevant today as they've ever been. The principles do not change. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark, yes, she saw the ark, she had to see the ark. Among the flags and sent her maid to fetch it. There is no mention that Pharaoh's daughter had a husband. No mention that she had children. But one thing is for sure. She had a heart within her. And like all others, all other women, they have that heart that when they hear what a cry, the cry of a baby for help. Then they, it goes out through them, from them, that yearning to help the one in need. And when she had opened what? Looked in, into the ark, and what did she see? She saw a baby, a baby boy who should have been cast into the river at the command of her own father. And behold, the babe wept. The, way, the babe wept at the precise moment that was needed. That's God. And she was moved. She had compassion on him. It wasn't a hardened heart. And said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. She recognized it, wa it wasn't an Egyptian there, a Hebrew. And she knew what she should have done. She knew which, this baby should have been cast into the river. But her heart overruled. She had a mother's heart. And no doubt she longed for a child, and for whatever reason she had not had a child. Then said his sister, Miriam, yes, we hear of Miriam later on, much later on. And we hear of, of Moses' brother Aaron much later on. What a wonderful godly family that must have been. Said to Pharaoh's daughter, this took courage as well. Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? The plan was there. The plan of God had been placed in the heart not only of Moses' mother, Moses' sister too, that the provision for the protection of Moses was there. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Yes, where the mother was, 
perhaps just hidden away somewhere but able to see what was going on. Our heart must have gone out to see the God had answered. It doesn't say she prayed about this matter. But what comes across is that she would have prayed about this matter. Prayer went up and prayer reached the throne. Not the throne of Pharaoh, but the throne of the Almighty God himself. And that prayer was answered right down to the minutest detail. That is our God. Have you and all who hear this over the coming years got that same confidence in the Almighty God? That he is a God hearing and a God answering God. For he is the Father. And the Father knows the cries from the hearts of those who are his. He knows the cries of those who are going through great suffering because they are found in the Lord Jesus Christ life, abundant life, the life of God. The life which no one else could give them. Life from the giver of life who comes to indwell those who are his. You'll not find life in the world system. The world only has to offer you heartache robbing you of your right and your right is to be made righteous through the Lord Jesus Christ to be made right with God So that God can give you all that he has to give. He knows what's best for you. And he will never, never fail when we ask him. That which is in line, not for self-seeking, not for the lust of the flesh, but for the glory of God and for the extension of his kingdom. We bring him more and more to under the sound of the glorious gospel and receiving Christ as Savior and as Lord. Through the blood which cleanses away all sin and all stain. And receiving the Spirit, God's Spirit. For that is life. And there's no life outside of that. All that's outside of that is eternal death. As you haven't Christ living, living within you, then you're still dead in trespasses and sins and cut off from God.
And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me. And I will give thee thy wages. Have you heard, of, heard anything like it? The mother's there being paid to look after her own son. Oh, God is so wonderful in his ways. They're past finding out. They're so glorious. They're so perfect. And the woman took the child and nursed it. What a joy for her. Oh, within our heart can we, can, we, can we feel it. That her child had been returned to her. For a period of time. For her to look. To bring him up. And he would have been taught. In the ways. Of God. In the ways of a Hebrew. That's why Moses, even though when he went to the palace and lived in the palace and was brought up in the palace, would have had instilled in him that he was not an Egyptian. He was a Hebrew. And would be able to seek to identify himself as a Hebrew God it's hard to take it in at times so so mighty so great are the ways of God and the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter she had done her best but the time came when she had to part with her son, what a wrench it would have been. What a wrench it was, too, for Reese Howells and Mrs. Howells. For them to leave Samuel behind and to go to Africa. That's intercession. Being able to leave behind the dearest, the one who meant all to them, and to put God before their own son. This is what happened with Moses' mother. She put God before her own son. So that God would be able to use this, this child in years to come, to fulfill the great this purpose in the whole of the Old Testament. And Pharaoh's daughter called his name Moses and she said because I drew him out of the water and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown. Yes, in Acts we read that during his education he was educated in all that Egypt had to give. The very best that Egypt had to give. But Moses knew he did not belong in the palace and was prepared to forsake all that the palace had to give, all its riches, all its glory, in order to identify himself with his own people, the Hebrews. That he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. He says he was 40 at this time. A long, long time to wait, to have waited before he went out and identified himself with those who, whom he was and ultimately to be the deliverer of God's people.
And what did he see? He saw these people being treated as slaves. They were downtrodden. They had lost heart. And Moses sought to do something. But he sought to do it through his own way. Rather than seeking God's way, how could one man in the palace look to deliver what must have been huge numbers in Egypt in need of deliverance? Only the Almighty through man would be able to do it. But Moses had to, had to walk as a failure first. He spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, uh, one of his brethren. He identified himself as this man who has been smitten was one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. What was that going to gain? Nothing whatsoever. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? He was expecting those Hebrews to understand that he was the deliverer. But the exact opposite took place. And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Yes, he be dressed as a prince. He was in the palace as a prince. Intendest thou to kill me? As thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. He couldn't hide it. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. Because he would seen that Moses was looking to rebel against Pharaoh and set the Hebrews free. and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. It was a long walk to Midian. Probably took him many, many days or weeks to get there. But again, he had gone to the right place at the right time, to the right people, because God had prepared a family to receive him and a place of safety for him to be, until all that remembered Moses in Egypt had died. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Rather a difference here from the palace to, to coming to a family who had a flock of sheep. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. If, for all we know, he may never have been used to doing any manual work. But now he was prepared to do anything. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it 
that ye are come so soon today. He probably got used to them coming at pretty much the same time each day after having watered the flock. Something was different on that day. And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. So, he must have looked, Moses must have looked like an Egyptian. And also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. This was to become Moses' lot, Moses' life for many, many years. Until Moses was brought to the position where he would not trust anything at all in himself. He would trust entirely upon the Almighty God and be prepared to be used by the Almighty. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Roel, we see, was a man, a very kind man, to accept this Egyptian into the midst. For that's all he was told, he was an Egyptian. He wasn't told he was a Hebrew. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter, and she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. He had to die, and the way be made open, the way prepared. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. They have been in bondage for years. And the time was coming. When the Almighty God himself was to reveal himself as Jehovah and come and act on their behalf, yet it had to be through God's chosen man. And their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And what? God heard their groaning. God, he hears. He's hearing now those who are suffering for Christ's sake. Those in countries where they are treated as, the, as, a, as debt. But God hears their cry. And God gives them his own riches. For all God's riches are in Christ. Every gift is in Christ. Have you taken of the gifts that God has to give in Christ? Sanctification. Righteousness. Wisdom. Knowledge, faith, and many, many more. They're all there in Christ, but they have to be taken as a gift and applied by the Holy Spirit within these lives of his. And God heard the groaning, and God remembered his covenant. God had a covenant with Abraham 
with Isaac and with Jacob. And what does that covenant say? In Genesis chapter 15 and verse 14 we read, And also that nation whom they shall serve, speaking of Egypt, will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. God had made that known to Abraham years and years and years before. And God now had found his man, this failure, whom God could take and use. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. God will not fail. He didn't fail the Hebrews. Didn't fail the children of Israel. He delivered them. And he certainly will not fail in these days either. That the church, the body of Christ, everyone who belongs to Christ, having been born again, having come into the kingdom of God, having been delivered from the kingdom of Satan, he will not fail. And they will be presented spotless and without blemish unto the Father through Christ. But what a wonderful prospect is before us in these days. Even whilst on earth, to keep receiving and receiving more and more of Christ. Have you sought to receive what Christ has to give you? That is the life, the true Christian life, not a life of poverty and seeking self, seeking the things of self, no. Living in the Spirit, by the, because the Spirit of God is living within us, to the glory of God, that God will be all in all. Thank you for being with me. I shall be back again tomorrow at 2.30 British time with the program, The Keswick Convention Continuing. Goodbye.